So the car industry is full of promises. Okay, it comes up all the time. You know, they used to promise that it would do 45 miles to the gallon, actually do more like 20 miles to the gallon, right? This is quite normal. And I get it, there has to be some sort of sales tactics, tactics or marketing tactics to, to help a car get sold. And usually that tactic involves having a bigger number than the other cars around you. I mean, there's more torque, more horsepower, uh, I don't know, there's always these kind of numbers, bigger fuel tank, or there's always something that a car company will use to try and make the number seem bigger than the car around it, the competition, the direct competition, because everything is about conquest. They want to conquest you away from someone else. So one of the newest numbers in electric cars that they use to try and get you enthusiastic about it is how fast you can charge it. And they talk about, you know, going from 20% to 80% in 30 minutes. They talk about going from zero to full in like an hour or whatever it is. They'll, they'll make some sort of a promise or they'll change that percentage. So they'll go from 30 to 80% in 20 minutes. It just kind of change the percentage of it. It's the new promise, the promise, the promised land of electric cars. Well, actually, how come when you buy your electric car, you don't often get that charge, no matter what charge point you use? But then, you know, the car company's offering you a 150 kilowatt charge, but you rock up to a charge point and you suddenly find out, it doesn't matter 150 kilowatts, it kind of charges more like 50. But it was at 100 a minute ago, but now it's 50, and then it's 30, and what's after happening there? So hang on, I actually need a prop to tell you how that works. One shot. Hang ah, yes. on. Just the two cans of gold, please. That's Debbie. Thank you. Okay, to explain this, I'm gonna to have to demonstrate using a can of Coke. So what you think of this is an empty battery, okay? Totally empty. And this is the fuel. Now you'll note, when I pour really, really fast, it fills up with fizz. Look at that fizz all coming to the top, but the liquid's not all in there. But if I slow down my pour, I can pour at a rate that allows me to fill the cup up with liquid but not phase. Look, just keep that trickle going. That is exactly what happens to your battery. Hey, look, it's this point that I have to ask you to uh, hit the subscribe button because you know, if you hit the like, comment, share button, it all helps the channel and it would give me a great boost as well. I'm gonna go back now to the video. So now, with my zesty drink, you know why a battery can't fill up very fast. It's the same for any battery as well. This includes any battery that's attached to anything. So even your phone is the same. It can only charge a certain rate. Now, that's only one reason why the charger doesn't work at the full speed. Sometimes that the chargers here in Port Leach Plaza, they're advertised at 150, they actually put out 50. Some put out even less than that. The other problem on the far side of it is the car company themselves, whether they put the onboard charger to be the right speed as well. So if you're charging from an AC plug, you might only charge a 7.4, even though the, the, the charger can do 22. You see, marketing people are still trying to get the grips with onboard charging, with the speed of the actual network. What you're gonna interact with when you actually reach a charge point. All these things are different, and every time we talk about them, we get shot down because we're told it's going to be better in the future. But is it though? And yes, I'm totally aware that the system is improving, and it is improving, and I don't, like, I don't blame the system for improving. It's just not improving very quickly, is it? I mean, we've had electric cars for, let's just say in Ireland, about 10 years. That's 10 years of funding that the ESB network is actually receiving. And yes, it does have a network. If you look across the board right now, there is quite a few little charge points. But really, this debate shouldn't even be happening, the speed of charging, if people were honest in the beginning. Because let's look at some of the competition. So the Renault Zoe was designed to not have a DC charger. It was designed with AC in mind, which means its onboard charger can charge it up to 22 kilowatts at a 22 kilowatt charger. That's brilliant because you might never need fast charging because it came with a small battery to begin with. And that small battery allowed people 
to be able to use the charging network but not have to worry about the fast charge network only about the slower charge network much easier because there's far more of the 22 or even 11s or even seven and a half kilowatt uh, out there than there is of the 50 and above chargers now that ESB have put the charge price upwards should discourage most of you from using it at your charge point. But I absolutely guarantee you, because there's a Kia e Nero just gone by, there's a, there's a Tesla just gone by me there now. I'm telling you, electric cars are becoming much more common than you think. And in that commonality, there will eventually be a lot more queues, because there's already queues happening here in Port Leash. And we have three fast chargers in a town of about, I think there's 18,000 people living here. We have three, and that, that main junction 14 is like the crossover point of anyone going for Cork or Limerick. So currently, at least until solid state, we have two ways of cooling batteries. One is air cooled. You're driving along, air flows over the battery and cools the battery down. That problem starts to exacerbate when you're at a charge point when the air is not flowing, the battery heats up a lot, so it's much quicker to degrade the battery over time. Then there's liquid cooling, which is the other option. Uh, there is some problems with liquid cooling. It's, it's more reliable, but yet Hyundai in their Ionic 5 admitted that there is leaks in their system, which means that some of that fluid is leaking out. And if it all leaks out, well, then you're back to air cool, aren't you? Also, the dried liquid on the outside of the battery can cause fire, as admitted by Tesla. I've left a link to those articles down below. Anyway, try not to worry too much about the speed of charging because in actual fact, your car probably stands still for up to 18 hours a day. It doesn't do anything. You plugged into a three pin socket, that stays in charge up. So it doesn't really, really matter all that much. It only really becomes critical when you go on a longer journey across country or you're actually going to interfere with the charging network. Anyway, I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have, please give me a little subscribe and a like and a comment and a share or whatever you want to do. If you've got questions, leave them in a comment and I'll make more of these kind of videos. If you want me to answer your questions uh, in a video format, then come up with a good question. Then be okay. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've hit the subscribe button. And until the next time, I'll see you on the far side.